Hi, my name is Johanna Stoberock. I'm a novelist based in Walla Walla, Washington. I was scheduled to read from my novel, Pigs, at this year's Get Lit, and also to participate in a panel on literature and climate change. Getting the word out about pigs has been uh, made very difficult by the advent of the coronavirus, as it has, I think, for almost every single book published in the past year. Ordering any new book from your local independent bookseller right now will help keep the literary lives um, of many writers intact throughout and after this crisis. And if you'd like to help artists in all disciplines, I encourage you to donate to Artist Trust's COVID-19 Artist Emergency Fund for Artists. Artists' financial lives are often precarious under any circumstances, and with the current breakdown of the gig economy, they're made even more precarious now. Okay, I'm gonna read a short section from my novel, Pigs, published by Red Hen Press in October of 2019. The pigs ate everything. Kitchen scraps, bitter lettuce from the garden, the stale and sticky contents of lunchboxes kids brought home from school, toenail clippings, hairballs pulled up from the drain. After the pigs were done, there weren't even any teeth left over, not even any metal from cavities filled long ago. They lived in a pen out back. The land was rocky but spacious, and the pen had been tucked in a corner out of sight for more years than any of the children could remember. It was made out of wood, gray splintered boards nailed together in a haphazard way. Every five feet, the wood was anchored by posts. When you stood by the fence, the pigs lumbered over, grunting, and stuck their snouts out between the rickety slats. It wasn't always that they expected food. Sometimes they just wanted their snouts scratched. Sometimes they just grunted happily and settled back down in the shade. There were six of them. They never fought. They seemed to smile when you approached, but you had to be quick. If you brought a bucket of slop and poured it out too slowly without moving your hand away, you never knew what could happen. Louisa was missing a finger. Not an important one, just her left hand pinky where she hadn't moved away quickly enough one hot summer afternoon when she was feeding them shoes. It was summer every afternoon there, soft and lazy and slow. The pinky came off in one clean bite before she even realized what was happening. She left with a feeling of shame, like it had been her fault the pig grabbed her finger. She wrapped her hand in her skirt and kept her mouth shut, and the stub didn't start hurting until she lay down for the night. The land was actually an island. The island was surrounded by water that glinted green in the sun and clouded to gray in the shade. Some might have let the pigs run free, feral among the scrubby bushes. The pigs could have rooted happily for mushrooms or truffles, found entire brambles of berries to eat, and maybe left the children alone. They could have gobbled up the entire world's detritus without anyone's help. But the grown-ups preferred the pigs confined. They preferred the relative safety of the fence. Louisa had lived on the island forever, or for as long as she could remember, which was the same as forever. There were other children too, three of them, Andrew who sang in his sleep and had straw colored hair, Mimi who was older or at least taller than the rest and who liked to pretend she knew much more about the world than anyone else and who couldn't grow her hair long no matter how hard she tried. There was even a toddler, they called her Natasha. Her head was covered with loose blonde curls. She couldn't have been more than three, and she giggled every time she heard the grunting of the pigs. They were all afraid of the gray water, of the sea in a mood of despair. It wrapped the island like a scarf made of grief. It made you choke with tears to touch it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if you're interested in reading more about pigs, you can go to johannastoberock.com. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.